better time than right now. Amen. Amen. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. We are thankful, 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 thankful for another wonderful opportunity for us to be here uh, at Word of Promise Ministries. Again, our heart's goal is always for us first to receive the promises of God, to walk in what God has provided for us and promised us in Jesus Christ all the change, all the right standing, all the peace, all the life, all the love, all the joy, all that he has provided that that again may be received by us as promised. And then as we then receive that promise, we are called to take the word of that promise out to others that others may as well receive and walk in everything that God has provided. So again, we are so thankful just to be able to be here and uh, to have the opportunity to fellowship with one another uh, and to come together and study God's word. Our heart's goal is always as well is for not only for the person that is before the camera to be able to speak, but others as well to be able to speak as thus saith the Lord, that all of us may be edified. That's how our hearts go. And so what we have been looking at and talking about for a little while now is we have been on this series on faith. We've been talking about faith and its great importance, all that God has provided and made available for us. He says that we receive and walk in by faith, the righteousness, the right standing before God, the peace with God, the love of God working in our hearts, Christ living in us. Again, him sanctifying us and setting us apart, him changing us, him allowing the renewing of our minds to take place. All of that happens as we live by faith in Jesus Christ, as we trust in what the word of God says concerning Jesus Christ that he has provided through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. That good news message of what Jesus did in coming to this earth and accomplishing God's will as we rely on and depend upon him. God says, everything that I've made available for you to walk in, again, you will walk in. And as we begin to walk in that, as we begin this process of trusting and depending upon and learning more and more of what it is that Jesus Christ has provided for us and depending upon him for that, we will start to see again all that come to rely and trust in Jesus Christ will start to become united. Will start to become united. And this is what uh, this scripture over here in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 through 13 speaks of where it says this it says and he himself this is speaking of Jesus he gave some to be apostles some prophets some evangelists and some pastors and teachers he says this is the purpose for these individuals being sent by God being raised up by God being again placed uh, by God as such he says that this is for the equipping of the saints, those that have come to faith in Jesus Christ, is so that they may be equipped for the work of the ministry. And then look what he says, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That again, that those that have come to faith in Jesus Christ may be built up in Christ. And then look at what he says, till we all come to the unity of the faith, the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And if you again, you notice here, he says that these apostles, evangelists, pastors, teachers, again, all these uh, individuals are sent to do is to e equip the saints again for the work of the ministry, that they may be edified and that they may come to this unity that is of the faith, this unity as, as men again live by faith in Jesus Christ. There's a unity that we're going to come to, that we come to uh, as this takes place. And so that's what I want to talk about today, the unity of the faith, the unity 
of the faith. And unity, again, is a wonderful thing uh, as presented by God uh, when it comes to those that have come to faith in Jesus Christ and those that are of God, who trust in God. Look at what it says over here in Psalms chapter 133, verse 1. It says, a song of ascent of David. And look at what he says. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Not just dwell together, but to dwell together in unity, united, that they may be united again. That it's a good and a pleasant thing for this to happen. This is what God uh, says and recognizes again concerning this unity. Again, this unity of the faith is that it's going to be good and pleasant for that to take place, for that unity to come. Not just people dwelling together, but them being united again. And then as we look over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10, look what it says. It says, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now I plead you, brethren, by the name of, what's that? Bird? Yeah, I don't know if it's a nest in it. Oh, yeah, probably so. Okay. But uh, uh, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. It says, now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all, look what he says, speak the same things and that there be no division among you, but that you will, you be perfectly joined together. Look what he says, in the same mind and in the same judgment. And that's really, again, what true unity is and what Paul is saying, that that is the hope that as you guys have been brought into Christ. Remember what it said back over here. It said again that as this happens where he has sent individuals, these apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, again, these individuals that edify the body of Christ, it is till we come to the unity of the faith and that unity Paul said over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 that it is us speaking the same thing it is us having the same mind and the same judgment and that's what I said here the results or the result of coming to the unity of the faith is this is that we will speak the same things yes. we will have the same mind slash understanding and we will have the same judgment the same judgments, the same judgments. And I said this, I said, we will speak the same things, have the same mind and judgments when we are taught and edified in the same truth of who Christ is, what he has done and God's purpose for doing what he did in Christ Jesus. Again, that's what those individuals, when Paul said in Ephesians chapter four, that he sent apostles, prophets, prophets, pastors, teachers for the edifying of the body of Christ. How do they edify them? By giving them the truth of who Jesus is. Again, because when I first come to salvation, I don't know who he truly is. I don't know all that he accomplished. I don't know, again, God's purposes for that. So I have my own mind, my own line of thinking that I have. But as I am taught, again, these truths, then what happens? Again, I begin to learn who Christ is. I begin to learn, again, what he has done through his death, burial, and resurrection. Not just that he died, not just that he was buried, not just that he was resurrected, but again, what was accomplished through those things. I began to learn that, and I began to learn God's purposes of sending Jesus and uh, to accomplish all that he sent Jesus to accomplish. Well, again, as I begin to learn and another individual begins to learn and another individual begins to learn, we become united. Yes. And I, with the same mind, with the same understanding, with the same, and, and, and with the same judgments, and we start to speak the same thing. Did you have your hand? Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Um, especially we who are called of Christ and even mm -hmm. those 
who coming coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, the title is fitted mm -hmm. unity of the faith. Yes. Oh, yes. The oneness of the faith. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not yes. Faith. Oh come on! Oh, come on! Yes. yes. Because that's the teach the mindset of this world now. My goodness! Oh, yes. My God. Being all faiths together. My goodness, oh my yes, God. they are saying But that. the Lord let us to know there's one faith, oh, one Lord, one, and one Baptist. Baptist. Yes, exactly right. So therefore, we all got to speak the same. Yes, thing. yes. And if God is love, my mind, come on. Oh, 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 we can't, man cannot teach anything about love other than Christ. Oh, come on, and that's he exactly can't teach it through Buddha. Oh, he come on, you better say it. Oh, you better he say it. He cannot teach it. Through any other religion. Oh my, my, oh, my. Mm -hmm. It's through one, the unity. Yes, so yes. So all got to come to a oneness. Yes, and yes. An understanding of love. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. That is so, so true. That's exactly right. And in order for that to have the same, for us to again start to speak the same thing, have that same mind yes. and same judgment, we have to be taught the same truth. Yes. Again. Yes. Uh, yes, we have to be again right. taught the same truth that's of who right. Christ really is because because when I really know what he did and what he accomplished again I can look at Buddhism and uh -huh. and the Muslim uh -huh. and see how it doesn't compare yes. how it doesn't even compare that's to what right. it is that Jesus Christ has done so again uh, uh, but I have to be edified in this that's so that right. I come to this unity again that's why Paul said and I keep going back to this scripture he's talking about believers here being equipped he's saying okay well once you get saved you are already united in the phenomenon he says you have to be edified so that you guys become united because again if not you'll just be all over the place he ended up uh, saying you'll be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine everything that comes out again you'll be all over the place well he says here that we are called to be united in the faith to have the unity of this faith where we speak the same thing yes. where we have the same mind where we have the same judgments yes. and again yes. that happens as we are, are taught the same truths yes. as yes. we are taught the same truths and i have to mention this as well that when he talked about the apostles the pastors the prophets the the teachers and the evangelists again for the uh, building up of the church all of these individuals are to work by the same spirit of god that's on yes. the inside of you so that's you got right. the word of god and that's the same right. spirit of god will speak to your heart that same truth that causes you to be edified to have the same mind as somebody over there in india that's that that's right. come to christ and, and allow the Spirit of God to speak to them. They'll speak the same thing, even though That's they're hundreds right. and uh, yes. of miles away from one That's another. Right. And uh, because That's it's the right. same spirit that is behind. And that's what, again, God wants. This unity. Remember that scripture where, over in Psalms 133 where it says that, that how beautiful or blessed or whatever it said for those uh, that are united. To, to operate together. And I'm saying it all wrong. He said, uh, again, behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. Did he stop there? No. He said in unity. That's right. In unity. It's good That's for people right. to dwell together that are united. Yes. That are united. Yes. And the reason why uh, that's so true, Paul even says the same thing concerning, again, us because if we look back over here we're in first corinthians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10 he says again god is faithful by whom you were called into this fellowship so he's talking to again believers who were called into this fellowship again and look what he says uh fellowship of his son jesus christ our lord now this is what he says he says to you who are called to this fellowship he says now i plead with you brethren by the name of our lord jesus christ that you all speak the same thing and this is the, the, the thing i want to talk about now and that there be no division among you That's right. but that you That's be right. perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment and so i wanted to talk about the division if we're going to talk about the unity of the faith we have to talk about the division of unbelief mm. and i'm talking about the unbelief working in Believers, oh That's my, right. oh, now, now this right. is what I said, I said we will be divided and therefore not speak the same things, have the same mind 
and judgment because we have been taught differently concerning what is the truth. That's where the division mm -hmm. comes in. Mm -hmm. I said, when this happens, well, I'm going to hold that. Well, I'll go ahead and say it. When this happens, the division will be of those who are approved and those disapproved. Oh, we're going to mm -hmm. talk about that. That's where the division is. But again, I said we will be divided and therefore not speak the same thing. We won't have the same mind and we won't have the same judgments. Why? Because what? Uh, uh, because we have been taught differently what uh, concerning what is the truth. That's what right. is the truth of who Jesus Christ is? What is the truth of what Jesus Christ accomplished and provided for us through his death, burial, and resurrection? And what is the truth of God's purposes and intent for, for sending Jesus, for sending the law, for sent, doing everything that he did? When we're taught differently about that, then again, we will again have a different judgment. We have a different mind. We have a different, again, uh, 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 we'll speak different things again mm -hmm. and we'll be divided. We'll That's be divided. Right. There'll be a division again of those that are, uh, according to God, approved uh -huh. and disapproved. And I'm talking about within the body yeah. of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about within the body of Christ. There will be those that are disapproved and those that are approved and look at what it says over here in first corinthians chapter 11 because paul talked about that in regard to believers and in regard to them again being separated and that that separation yeah. was a, yeah. a showing of who's approved and who's not look at what he says in first corinthians chapter 11 verse 17 through 19 and he's talking about here the lord's supper uh, them coming together for the Lord's mm -hmm. Supper. But look at what he said. He says, now in giving these instructions, he says, I do not praise you since you come together, not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among mm -hmm. you. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. And look at what he says. And in part, I believe it. He says, for there must also be Factions among you that those who are approved may be recognized among you. So if though oh, so he says here that I've heard that there's some division going on in y'all church. And he says, and I believe it. And he says, he says, and and not all he said, I don't I believe because there is that division that takes place is a separation of those that are approved from those that are disapproved. It's a showing of those that are approved and that those that are disapproved. He says that there must be factions among you, sects, separation, grouping right. of people That's again. Right. And the purpose of it is it's going to show who's approved and who's not. That that's what it is uh, going to show. It's going to show those who are approved and those who are not approved. Now we know we, when we talk about the word approve, it shows over here in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 and 16, where it says, be diligent to present yourselves. Look what he says, approved to God. And what is an approved person? It is a worker who does not need to be ashamed, uh -huh. one who rightly divides right. the word of truth. Right. And look, look what he says in verse 16. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. Yes. So what is an approved person here? It is a person who rightly divides the word of truth from idle babblings. From, from just stuff that folks are saying that ain't got truth in it, uh, but they say it and they try to connect it to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. A person who is approved is the one who knows, who rightly divides, who separates, again, God's truth from that line, that idle babbling that's being spoken. Again, and that's a worker who does not need to be ashamed. And so again, it goes back to showing that that approving is uh, uh, and disapproving is a result of again what has been uh, operated in is it the word of truth or is it just idle babblings that people are speaking or saying that only increases to more ungodliness again what is uh, uh, being allowed in my heart that I call truth 
Is it the truly the word of truth? Or is it these idle babblings that people are saying again? And what's going to happen is there's going to be a division that's going to happen. Because again, those that again live by the word of truth and, and, and lean on and depend on the word of truth, they're not going to align with the idle babblings. Well, at the same time, those that live by idle babblings, the word of truth ain't going to match up. So again, they're not they're going to have a different judgment. They're going to have a different mindset. They're going to speak different things than again an individual who allows that word of truth to again work in their heart to be received where they allow the truth of who Jesus Christ is, the truth of what he accomplished, the truth of God's purpose for sending Jesus to accomplish everything he sent him to accomplish. The person who lives according to that, again, is going to have a different mind, a different judgment, and they're going to speak different things, and they're going to be, there's going to be an automatic, like oil and water, like darkness and light, there's going to be an automatic starting of separation there. And he right. says that that, again, separation shows who's, who's approved and who's disapproved. And again, and, but God wants that unity of the faith that where, is. again, people are allowing the word of yes. truth yes. to be placed in our hearts. So many people in this day and age act like, oh, it doesn't matter what you believe. It don't matter mm -hmm. what folks say. You're just supposed to be united just for the sake of being united. No, mm -hmm. no. No, there is going to be a separation. There's going to be a divide when we think differently, when we speak differently. There's going to be a divide because there is no unity that, is, uh, that, that people haven't come to the unity of the faith. And so again, again, uh, that uh, rightly dividing the word of truth, again, is an individual who has been edified, who has been built up in God's a word and concerning what Jesus Christ has done and what he's accomplished and God's purpose for that, that person again is going to have a different mindset. They're going to have a different, uh, again, understanding. They're going to have a different words they're going to speak. It's going to be different. Uh, and then at the same time, they're going to have, uh, again, a different judgment, how they look at situations, how they uh, consider situations and things that happen. They're going to judge them differently. They're going to, again, see these things very, very differently uh, than, again, an individual who's been built up in, again, uh, not built up, but who's had uh, not the uh, word of truth, but idle babblings. They've allowed that to be placed in their heart as truth. And that there, there isn't a unity there. And so my point with this whole thing is just to show that there isn't supposed to be a unity just for the sake of unity. Yeah. No, that unity has to be a unity of the faith. It has to be that. Go ahead, sir. Yes, and, and, and Paul lets us to know that in spite of the culture, because that's mm. the culture. Mm. Oh, what have you? I got mine, you get yours. My, my. Or uh, uh, less compassion about mm -hmm. maybe an individual who may, who may have problems getting mm -hmm. to where you at. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, or what mm -hmm. have you. But uh, Paul lets us to know through the scripture, time doesn't have nothing to do with oh, it. My. Because what's going on today, baby? Oh, it's the same before, thing. The same thing. Same thing. But in Christ, there's an ability. Oh, my. Come on now. But only in and through Him. Can it be accomplished? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's what we uh, we have to remember. We have, who who are in Christ that in Him, mm, because it's even being practiced now mm. upon the so-called high-profile preachers mm. in the name of Christ, my man, or what have you. You know they don't have no consideration. Who may have a storefront? My, my, you know, my, my. all are supposed to be the same oh, thing. Oh, that's or right. Have you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, we should all be able to help one to another. That's exactly right. Why not? Especially when it comes to the word of God. Oh my! Because exactly. that's the unity of it. That's the one that's between me and the high profile. Exactly. Who have you. It's supposed to be. Yeah. But, exactly. but, but oftentimes that's what separates us. Yes. That's what yes. separates us is again, because because again, found in Christ, God can unite. I don't care if it's uh, uh, black and white. It, uh, it, again, woman, man. It could it could be again 
uh, Chinese and black. He can unite all of that right. again in the faith, though. That's right. When they hear the same That's truth, right. when they hear again uh, the truth of who Christ is, and they allow that to be the reality that they live by. Again, what he's accomplished and God's purposes in truth, when they allow that, that was what will unite us. But we can both be black and we can be divided again mm -hmm. if we're not allowing the word of truth to be, again, what unites us, that unity in the faith. That's what God is ultimately saying, because he can do the uniting, but it has to be in Christ and it has to be according to truth. And that's what, again, that unity of the faith is. And look at what it says over here in First Timothy chapter 6, verse 3 through 5. It says, if anyone teaches otherwise he's showing again this separation how people again see uh, operate differently and say different things he says if anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent mm -hmm. to wholesome words even the words of our lord jesus christ and to the doctrine which accords with godliness he is proud yes. knowing nothing oh. but is obsessed with disputes and arguments uh -huh. over words from which come envy, yeah. strife, reviling, evil suspicions, verse 5, useless wrangling of men, look what he says, of corrupt minds uh -huh. and who are destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. Look what he says, from such withdraw yourself. Oh, that's a division that he said, that again, because these individuals have corrupt minds. Again, what do we have? We're supposed to have the same mind. Are we supposed to have a corrupt mind or the mind of Christ? Well, they have a corrupt mind. He said that their doctrine doesn't accord or align with godliness. The doctrine of, of Jesus Christ aligns with with the godliness again so there's going to be that separation paul is saying here he says that they don't consent to wholesome uh -huh. words the words of our lord jesus christ they don't consent to them they don't uh, uh, uh submit to them they don't agree right. with them well he says of these individuals and he's speaking of individuals in the yeah, church that's right in the that's church right. And he's saying right. of these individuals, there's going to be a division. Mm -hmm. Again, they're going to show that they are disapproved again mm -hmm. because their judgment is off. Look what he says, that they don't, they don't consent to wholesome words. They, their doctrine doesn't accord uh, to godliness. Their judgment is off. Our judgment is again according to godliness. It's according to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's according to, again, what it is that, that uh, it says that he has done and accomplished. Again, so there's going to be a division automatically like water and oil. That's, right. that's going to be a separation. That's and right. Paul is saying from such withdraw yourself. And see, that's for mm -hmm. those that want to just say, hey, okay, yeah, they believe that way. But I'm still supposed to walk with that brother or that sister. No. 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 He says that again, that their doctrine uh, does not accord with godliness. They, they again, he says they, they are obsessed with disputes and arguments over uh, non-essential uh -huh. words. Just, just stuff that really don't matter. Again, yes, exactly. He says from envy, strife, uh, reviling, evil suspicions. He says useless wrangling of men of corrupt mind and they are destitute uh -huh. of the truth. And so he speaks of this and tells us to withdraw ourselves yes, from them. Yes, it will be yes. like oil and water. And he's saying, don't you try to be the one who mixes the oil and water. No, what God does is God will then take, again, whatever is oil and make it water yes, so that right. it works together in Christ. That's, right. That's what he does. He doesn't say, okay, I'm going to mix oil and water. And y'all just, no, he says, in Christ, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make whatever is oil, whatever's tar, whatever, whatever it is. I'm going to make it all water so it flows in me. Uh, That's what I'm going to do. And I do that by giving them the same mind, giving them the same judgment, again, by allowing the same truth to work in their heart. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> I'm going better than the scripture lets me to know that not only make uh, 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 you would say make all water, he can make all water, uh -huh. 
But he shows us he make one into mine. Oh, come on. He can. <laughs> exactly. And, and oh my. And he can. And that's the yeah. thing. I continue to say when it, when we go back to that unity of the faith, he yes. can take whatever we were. Yeah. And, right. and again, and that's what the whole process is. Again, when he says I, I've sent uh, apostles, pastors, prophet, <coughs> prophets, teachers. I've sent them to edify the church so that they can be changed, so that they can come to the unity of the faith, so that all of us can operate as the water, so that we can, again, operate in the unity, so that there be no separation yeah. again. But yeah. again, he says here that some won't consent to that. Some won't align with that. And he says, for them, from such, withdraw yourselves, remove yourselves from individuals like this. And then look at what he says over in 2 Timothy again as he talks more and more about these individuals again who because there is no unity in the faith because they don't have the same mind as us. They don't have the same judgment. They don't speak the same things. And again look at what he says about them again over here in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3 verse 6. He says for of this sort speaking of these again individuals these false teachers. He says, for of this sort are those who creep into households uh -huh. and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins who are led away by various lusts. Verse 7, always learning. They're always learning, uh -huh. but they're ne never able to come to the uh -huh. knowledge of the truth. Again, which again is what unites us. He says, look at this. Now, as James and Jabrez resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, look what he says, disapproved concerning the faith. Mm. Again, look mm -hmm. at what is the issue with these constant individuals. They resist the truth. And this is what causes them to be divided from those yeah. of us who are united in the faith. What causes us to be united in the faith? It is the fact that we would allow the truth yes. to edify us. The truth right. of who Christ is. The truth right. of what it is that he's done. Again, the truth of, of what God's purpose and intent for sending him. We allow that truth. These individuals, again, they resist the truth. That's right. And therefore, they are disapproved concerning the faith. Yeah. Again, he's not even talking about talking about individuals who are of the world, meaning not saved. Uh -huh. He's talking about those that claim Christ. Because just like uh, uh, Jabrez and, and Jans, I think that's the name, they were, again, within the children of Israel in the group that uh -huh. Moses led. Well, they were, again, those that came out of uh, Egypt, just like we, through salvation, come out of the world and are in Christ. But what did they do? They resisted the truth right. that was in 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 that 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 child called the, the children of Israel. Uh, they resisted the truth of Moses. Well, in the same way, people now will resist the truth of Christ. They'll resist right. that truth, and they'll be men of corrupt minds, and they'll be disapproved concerning the faith, and there'll be this division. That's Just like right. there was a division with them and, and Moses and the group, there was, there was a division because, again, they rejected the truth. They rejected, again, the truth of God's word. Well, there are going to be individuals now that reject the truth of God's word. And therefore, they're going to be, there's going to be a separation. That's again, right. there's going to be a divide. Go ahead. That's right. It's, it's, it's nothing but, wow, falling away. Mm. Back into self internet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it don't please, if it don't make sense mm -hmm. to the psyche, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it cannot be of God. Uh huh. Yep. Or what yep. Happened. yep. If 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 it, if one and one don't make two, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it gotta be wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because exactly. Because you know that one and one and one makes two. Mm -hmm. Makes me, but it makes one. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> it, exactly right. And, and and they don't even understand that you got to do math a whole totally different That's way right. when it comes to God. That's right. And uh, not what you've learned all your life. And so, I mean, that is so true. Mm -hmm. And again, and just to go back, it even says what the problem was with these individuals. I think it's over here where he, he talked about uh, these individuals. I think it's in here. Oh, yeah, here it is. 
He says, he said this about him, and this is the main problem with individuals like that. In verse 3 of 1 Timothy chapter 6, it says again, if anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent mm -hmm. to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the doctrine, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, this is his problem. He is proud. Mm -hmm. Knowing nothing. Mm -hmm. He is proud. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Pride. Yes. Pride. Yes. We're going to talk about that one day. Pride is the, the enemy yes. that, yes. that keeps people from salvation and yes. keeps them from growing in Jesus Christ. Yes. Christ. It's the pride. And, uh, and that's truly what that problem is. That's what the separation really comes in. It's rather a person has a humility where they rely on, yes. depend upon what Jesus Christ has done and has provided. They want to know more. Or the proud who just think that they can handle it, that they smart enough, that they can do it, that I'm good enough, I can fix it, or I ain't even worried about that stuff. I'm just worried about other things and refuse to acknowledge the truth of, again, their own issue and their own problem and their need for the Lord. That's really where the, the problem That's lies. Right. That's right. And see, what it goes on to say over here, because, again, I'm just attempting to show what's the issue that causes the division. Because again, a lot of times uh -huh. it is presented that we are just supposed to be uh, 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 united just for the sake of united instead of realizing that the uniting is in the truth. Exactly. It's in the truth of Jesus Christ. That's where the uniting is. And so I want to show then what individuals are doing that are causing the separation. What That God is saying, okay, you need to withdraw yourself. From these type of individuals again and be united with individuals who are again being edified in the truth like you are who have the same realization of who jesus christ is and what he came to do and accomplish and god's intent and purposes and then ultimately now having the same judgment where you start to see things uh, uh and judge uh certain situations and things that that happen you judge it the same way you see it the same way and you see it properly as God sees it. Again, where there's that separation because of what is being taught and what's being received. Look at what he says in Titus chapter 1, verse 7 through 9. He says, for a bishop must be blameless mm -hmm. as a steward of God, mm -hmm. not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not given to wine, mm -hmm. not violent, not greedy for money, but hospitable a lover of what is good, sober-minded, just, uh, just, holy, self-controlled. And this is where I wanted to get to. Um, I read all that for context purposes. In verse 9, it says, Holding fast the faithful words as he has been taught. I just want to pause there. Now, he says here that a bishop should be one who is able to, again, who, who has the ability to be able to teach. He is has to be one who is holding fast to faithful words as he is taught. Now, remember what the problem with these other individuals were? What, what was their problem? They kept resisting the truth. Remember that? They, they, if anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, that's what these other individuals were doing. They weren't consenting. They weren't submitting to wholesome words to the truth of Jesus Christ. Well, he says here, the bishop should be one who, again, who holds fast to faithful words. He, as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and convict those who contradict. And then he says in verse 10, he says, for there are many Look what he says, insubordinate. When, when a person is insubordinate, what does that mean? They, 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 exactly. They work, they, they are a worker at a job, but they're not operating properly according to the job that they're called to. Oh my. So, so what is he talking about here? He's talking about individuals who have come to faith in Jesus Christ, have been given a job, but they're not operating. They're not individuals who have been equipped for the work of the ministry because they hadn't been edified. In the truth, they haven't been built up, and and uh, that, uh, I'm gonna talk about that later. But look what he says: for there are many insubordinate, both idle talkers and deceivers. Again, so what is a person who is subordinate or who who does do what they they're supposed to be doing in this case? They're not idle talkers; they're speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. 
mm. of Jesus Christ. They're not deceiving people. They're speaking the truth yep. of Jesus Christ. And so he says, both idle talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, speaking of the Jews, uh -huh. whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert households. Look at all the damage they do. They subvert whole households, teaching things which they ought not for the sake of dishonest gain. He says, one of them, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. He says, this testimony is true. Therefore, rebuke them sharply. Look what he says, that they may be sound yes. in the faith. So what's the opposite of that he just said? He said that you can have them being taught these idle babblings, these things, uh, again, that they're being taught that isn't causing them to be sound in the faith. Uh, causing them, again, which being sound in the faith is a result of a, or is what you're going to be over here when you're united with others in the faith. Uh, I'll say that again later. And so he says here, though, that they may be sound in the faith. Mm -hmm. He says, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men who turn from the truth. He says, to the pure, all things are pure, but those things, uh, but to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure, but even their mind and conscience are defiled. They profess to know God, look at that now, mm -hmm. but in works, uh -huh. they deny him, yeah. being abominable, uh -huh. disobedient, and look what he says, and disqualified for every good work. And this is my point, going back over here to Ephesians chapter four, Verse 11, what is the purpose again of people being taught the truth of, as he says here, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. He says, for the equipping of the saints. Why? For the work of the ministry. This is the reason why people are to be edified in the truth. The truth of who Jesus Christ is. The truth of what he accomplished. The truth of God's purpose in sending him. And the outcome, the expected outcome that God has as a result of a person working in Christ. As we learn that we are edified and equipped for the work of the ministry. What is the work of the ministry? To go forth and proclaim that same truth that we allow to again work in our hearts. And then he says that as a result of us allowing that to work in our hearts, we're going to come to this unity where all of us have the same mind, speak the same thing, and have the same judgment. Mm -hmm. But if a person does not allow the truth, again, they will give heed to, uh, to Jewish fables and commandments of men. Right. They'll, they'll, again, They'll turn from the truth. They'll be defiled and unbelieving. And they'll have their minds and their conscience defiled. And then look what he says at the end in verse 16. They, they will profess to know God, but in works they deny him. Meaning what? They haven't, they'll deny him in works because they hadn't been edified and equipped for the work of God. And he says, and, and they'll deny him, they'll be a, a abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every good work. And I, my point, my whole point with this and showing this is that as we allow the truth of who Christ is to work in our hearts, what he accomplished to work in our hearts, God's purpose of, what, of sending Christ, of sending the law, of doing everything that he did, to work in our hearts. That truth again will start to work in all of those that allow that to happen and they'll be united. They'll start to speak the same thing that God wants them to speak. They'll have the same mind that God wants them to have. They'll have the same, again, judgment where they, uh, again, again, judge situations and circumstances the same way. But to a person, again, who won't allow that truth, to work in their heart. They'll have a different mindset. They'll speak different things that God doesn't want them to speak. And they'll have a different judgment that God doesn't want them to have. Mm -hmm. And that will be that separation That's right. that God says, again, will take place even within the church. Yes. 
even within the church. And so the unity of the faith, us being united in the faith, will be then a result of not us just saying, hey, we say we believe Jesus, so let's just, uh, uh, we, we all united. No, it will be according to the same truth. That is working in our hearts. That we live by faith in Jesus on. That we trust in him for the same purpose that God says. That he sent Jesus to uh, uh, to do what he did. We'll live by faith in Jesus Christ for who he truly is. Not what, again, man makes him to be. but And we'll, again, live by faith in what Jesus Christ accomplished in truth through his death, through his burial, and through his resurrection. And that will be, again... What again unites us in yes. the faith and will separate us from again those yes. that don't yes. allow that to take place. So again, uh, again, being united is the goal of God, yes. but it's not just a united for the sake of being united. It is being united in the truth. And the second thing is being separated is fine with God as long as you're separated because again there is a disconnect in the truth that again that these individuals operate in truth and they are separated from those who are in error who twist the word of God who lead people astray who who again have false incorrect judgments and mindsets and again and they refuse to consent to wholesome words to the truth of God's word and so again unity is what God ultimately wants he wants all of us to come and allow that truth but he understands just like we need to understand that some people aren't going to do that uh -huh. some, some people aren't going to uh, give consent to wholesome words they're not going to allow the truth of who Jesus Christ truly came to be to work in their heart and so if there's division that is expected to happen Again, and he says, uh, attempt to minister, to uh, correct, uh, to rebuke in love and truth, to draw them over. But again, if they stand firm in their error and in their way, you operating outside and, and separate from that, God is absolutely fine with. Amen? Amen. You got something? I can say, uh, one thing, because um, being that we deal with one God who's over us, yes, should be above us all, yes. So, therefore, we all should be in unity, yes, according yes. to what He shows us, exactly. Oh, I have it. exactly, you know, it may be different things, but it has one common goal. In oh, it. yes, yes, exactly. And, um, and that's more or less, you know, I believe, poor. Let us to know, don't get caught up in the trap. Oh my, yes, yes. Don't get caught up back in the trap of yourself, mm -hmm. because because that's all it is. Yeah, for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Or what have you? Mm -hmm. But if if you know, say that mean you have an issue. Yeah, 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 you yeah. You bumping heads, mm -hmm. especially concerning the things of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You got a Lord to go to. Oh, exactly, exactly. My and, mind. And, and, and not to let us know who's right and wrong, but uh, how he's allowing things to be within us. My God. Oh, that's exactly right. And that is so, so true. <laughs> and, I, and I wanted to even say that as well, concerning, again, uh, when, when we, we talk about, again, the unity and the disconnect, uh, again, this is a, a, about wholesome uh, truth that is in Christ versus error. We're yes, not, it's not yes, talking about, just yes. like Paul said, I think it's in. Romans chapter 14, where again, that, that was, he said, don't allow this division over doubtful things, uh -huh. things that really don't, um, you know, uh -huh. who, 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 he said one way, one, one serves on the Lord, what he calls the Lord's day, the other yeah. one serves every day the same. Yeah. He right. said, don't let some, you know, <laughs> foods like that exactly. separate, because that, that means exactly. that one eats meat. And one only eats uh, vegetable. You know, don't don't let. They, right, we're not talking about right, that. We're not right, talking about right. again a separation because of something like that. That Paul said really doesn't matter. We're talking about again a truth, truth of who Christ is. Again, yes. whether you eat meat or you only eat vegetables yeah. don't mean anything. Whether you you That's again right. uh, 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 take one day uh, to celebrate something. Uh, and someone says they don't, that doesn't mean anything. That, that has absolutely nothing, again, to, to do with anything. But here he's talking about sound truth that is in Christ. That that, again, will cause true division that God says it will separate those that are approved 
from those that are disapproved. That's right. And it, he says That's he ultimately right. wants all to allow the truth of who Christ is, what he's accomplished, what he's done, and God's purpose for it. He wants people to allow that to work in their hearts and there will be a unity that takes place there. But he understands at the same time that some people won't consent to that. And that mm -hmm. there's going to be a separation when that happens. So, Lord, we just bless you. Yes, we thank Lord. you, Lord. We thank you that it is so wonderful for oh, those yes, who Lord. dwell together in unity uh, oh, to, yes, to do that, oh, Lord. That it's a beautiful and wonderful thing. And that's our heart's goal in this ministry. That's our heart's goal for everyone, oh, Lord, who listens to this this uh, uh, teaching and also everyone who is within the body of Christ. We pray that all of us, oh, God, are united in the truth. That we allow the truth of Jesus Christ to work in our hearts, to edify us, to build us up to where we come and we're speaking the same mind. The big church, the little church, again, the, the church in India, the church in America, wherever it may be, we're speaking the same thing. That we have the same mind, that we have the same understanding, and that, oh Lord, that we have the same judgments. Oh, Lord, that you, by your spirit, have placed that spirit in, in all of us and you will edify us that that comes to pass, that that unity of the faith comes to pass. Oh, Lord. And so we thank you for that and we bless you and we honor you. Allow, again, the truth that we've heard this day to, to again, continue to speak to our heart, to edify us, to grow us up. Oh, Lord, that we may be equipped for the work of ministry to go forth and to speak what thus saith the Lord. We honor you, we praise you, and we bless you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. No matter time, Amen. you're right now. For you to turn. Tomorrow's not promised to any of us. So please.